Welcome back to the channel guys. We're gonna start something a little different this week. For those of you who are used to watching the channel, don't worry. We're not giving up on Miata content. There'll still be plenty of RX-7s and all kinds of other cool cars. But we're gonna take a little detour for a bit and we're gonna kick off a new project. Project Second Gen Camaro. Now for as long as I can remember, my stepdad has wanted a muscle car. One that he can drive around, feel cool in, and just generally enjoy. Now he's retired, and we have this fabulous shop here. So figured it would be great to help him out. And what we're gonna do is pull out the small block 350 and transmission, and we're gonna put a LS3 and a six-speed automatic in it. So follow along and continue to join us while we do an LS swap on our second-gen Camaro. He bought this car maybe 10 years ago or so, and it's kind of sat around for the most part. He's driven it here and there. Uh, it's always plagued with little issues like leaks. So what we're going to do is just rip the whole thing apart. By the time we're done, it's going to have working AC, brand new LS3 engine, brand new transmission. We're going to put everything together and make it something he can just drive around and enjoy every day he wants. So first off, what are we working with here? Uh, Reminder of the old days of cars where you could just come by and pull up anybody's hood. Oh boy, it is hard to pull up. Oh, and it is heavy. The car has a pretty typical old school small block 350 in it. I don't know how much horsepower it's pushing, but it's probably not as much as people used to give these things credit for. The first step here is pulling the radiator out. So we've already pulled the fan shroud out. What we've noticed here is there's a transmission cooler here, and then there's also transmission cooler lines to hook up to the radiator. This car has two transmission coolers. It must be a really hot automatic. But we've almost got this taken apart, and we're gonna pull this out, and then move on to starting to disconnect the motor itself. We've gotten the radiator out now. Um, who would have guessed we made a mess? Next up, we're gonna start disconnecting this engine. We have gotten everything that I can find in the engine bay, or at least it's easy to get to off. So now it's time to raise it up in the air. We'll disconnect the starter, disconnect the exhaust, drive shaft, and whatever else we find under there. got the exhaust unhooked can't actually get to the starter so we've lowered it now it's time to start taking the headers off now the first thing we'll want to do here is go ahead and pull off the hood so we're pretty much ready to pull the engine now the last big piece here was taking the hood out if you're used to playing with newer cars you're probably not used to 80 plus pound hoods so this took quite a bit of work to not break well, we've got it out here, out in the grass. Now we can go and pull the motor out. Here's our hoodless Camaro. And what we're going to do is now pull the cherry picker over here, hook it up, pull it out of the top. I believe there's plenty of room here. We're going to try to get away without pulling the front of the, the car apart because that's more work. We've got the engine out. Camaro's front end is sitting way up in the air, which is to be expected. Looks like it's doing a wheelie. Maybe it will once the engine's in. Oops, forgot to drain the transmission fluid. Well, now the pig mats are gonna clean up the transmission fluid instead. Probably pressure wash the engine base so we can get the 50 years worth of grime and gook out of here. We want something that looks clean, not whatever that is. Well, that's what happens when you don't drain the transmission. So I guess now we're gonna start cleaning it up these down. If you've not used these before, it took me like a decade to figure out these things existed. These are called pig mats. You can buy them in a lot of places. I found a cheap uh, option on Amazon. And what you do is you set them down and they just absorb a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, 
I look a little dirty. That pretty much always happens. But now we have lots of spots where there's no more oil. So this thing won't be as gross. Uh, what this did highlight is that there's a bunch of places where we're going to do some painting because there wasn't actually paint there anymore. It was just oil and it kind of looked like it was paint, I guess. So now it'll be paint instead. More work. I guess that's to be expected with old cars. You got the old engine. This thing's served mankind well. It's been responsible for many family vacations, campers, truck hauling, car hauling, hot rodding, all kinds of cool stuff. And this is the new hotness in town. Effectively still small block 350, but aluminum and tends to make as much power in stock form as a lot of pretty highly modified 350s do. The size comparison of them sitting here is pretty apparent. I mean, everybody kind of says, oh yeah, they're the same size. And, you know, look, they are. Uh, minus all the accessories here over on the LS3. So it should go in the Camaro pretty easily. We are done for this round. Everything's packed in there. We've got to find somebody that wants to buy a Chevy 350. If you know somebody in the comments, go ahead and tell us. We'll be happy to let them come pick it up. Uh, I'm not shipping it though. So join us next time. We're going to change out the oil pan on the bottom of the LS3. We're going to remove some of the cabling that doesn't belong under the second gen anymore and really uh, prep to be able to set it in there. And then we can move on to other cool things. See you next time. <music>